Okay, we're now going to look at second order derivatives. Everything we've done so far is first order derivatives. So let's read through what I've got here. When you differentiate once, the expression you get is known as the first derivative. Unsurprisingly, when we differentiate a second time, the resulting expression is known as the second derivative and so on. You can have third derivative, fourth derivative, nth derivative. It can just keep going and going. So if our original function is y equals x to the power of 4, we get dy by dx is 4x cubed. If you differentiate that again, so I'm now going to do 4, multiply it by the power, which is 3, and reduce the power, I get 12x squared. And we say that it's d squared y or d2y dx squared. OK, and I talk about why that's the notation for Leibniz in just a second. If you're using the dash notation, you would just write two dashes for the second derivative, three dashes for the third derivative, etc. If you're using Newton's, which we don't use, you'd put a dot above y, two dots above y, three dots above y, etc. And for Lagrange's notation, when you're doing it with f of x, you do f dash for the first derivative and f double dash for the second derivative. Similarly, you could have a third derivative like this. Although this is no longer in the A-level syllabus, but we'll see why um, we'll see why we might use the second derivative soon. What is the second derivative actually going to be used for? Now, usually people are always like, why are the twos appearing in that place? Why don't we get instead dy by dx squared? Why don't we have the twos next to the x and the y? And I'm going to explain that on the next page because it's going to tell us a little bit more about how differentiation is actually working. So how does the, the notation d2y dx squared work? Why are the squareds where they are? So let's just think about this with an example. Let's think of something really, really uh, simple. We're going to say that, I don't know, y equals 4x cubed minus 12x. Now, what you're actually doing here when you differentiate is you are applying this function, and this function that you are applying is called d by dx, and you're doing that on both sides. This d by dx thing, the instruction is to differentiate and you differentiate it with respect to x. When I say with respect to x, what this means is you just concentrate on the x variable. Concentrating on the x variable, in other words, you apply that rule of bringing the power down and multiplying by the power, multiplying the power, sorry, bring the power down and reducing the power by one. Now, when you do d by dx to y, you get d by dx, and I'm just going to write it with this, with y for a second. And on the right hand side, when I do d by dx to 4x cubed minus 12x, you actually differentiate that. Now, d by dx of y has a standard answer. We just write that as dy by dx. I'm just going to put that to the side there because I'm not going to write it out just yet. So that's me differentiating y with respect to x. When I differentiate this side with respect to x, I'm just going to have 4 times it by 3. I'm going to get 12x squared and I'm going to get minus 12 like that. So this whole section here was the first derivative. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the second derivative. So I'm going to apply again this d by dx function, differentiating with respect to x. When I differentiate this with respect to, to x, I'm going to have d by dx, and I'm still going to have d by dx from the previous time with the y, and I'm going to differentiate this all here with respect to x as well. So d by dx just means look at the x variables and let's differentiate them. So this right-hand side here is just going to become 24x that 12 is going to completely disappear. And this is where the notation comes from. You're doing d by dx multiplied by, well, not multiplied by, but it sort of is like multiplying. So it's the same idea. That is going to look like d squared dx squared like this. That's why the 2 appears after the d and not after the y. So we then get d2y by dx squared. So they're not actually multiplying like I've got over here, but that's kind of how the notation is behaving. So this bit that I've done with this d by dx, this is what we've secretly been doing this whole time. This is why underneath y we write dy by dx. We don't, um, we're not just magically writing dy by dx, we're applying this differentiating with respect to x notation, it's like a function. Okay, so let's start applying this. I'm going to just do a couple of examples here and then you're going to try some yourself. So to do it, it's simple, just differentiate it twice. 
So y equals 3x to the 5 plus 4x to the minus 2. Of course, it needs to be written like that. When I differentiate y with respect to x, I get this. I'm going to bring that power down so I get 15, and I'm going to reduce that power by 1. I'm going to bring that power down to multiply the 4 by minus 2, so I get minus 8x to the minus 3 when I decrease that by 1. And then I'm differentiating the left-hand side with respect to x, so I get this. And now I'm going to differentiate the right-hand side. When I say I'm differentiating the right-hand side, I am applying d by dx to this expression that I've got here, which is what we've been doing this whole entire time, okay? I guess I should really have had that arrow going here. And so when I differentiate that with respect to x, 15, pull that 4 down, 15 times 4 is 60, so it is going to be 60x cubed, and then I'm going to do minus 8 times minus 3, which is positive 24x to the minus 4. So this thing that I've got down here is my second derivative, and you can see it's the second derivative from those bits in the notation. Okay, now we're going to try another one here. It says if f of x is equal to this thing, find the second derivative. You can tell it's the second derivative because of those two dashes there. So I'm going to rewrite this so it's in a proper form. That's going to be 3x to the half plus, don't take that 2 out from the denominator, leave that 2 in the denominator as a half. And I'm going to go straight in and say this is x to the minus a half. A half because it's a root and minus because it was in the denominator. So the first derivative I'm going to differentiate this. I'm going to pull that half down, so it's going to be 3 over 2x. I'm going to reduce a half by 1 to get minus a half. I'm going to do a half times by minus a half, which is going to be minus a quarter x. And a half minus, sorry, minus a half minus 1 is minus 3 over 2 for the power. So the second derivative, I'm now differentiating it again. I'm going to pull that minus a half down. So I'm going to have 3 over 2 multiplied by minus a half and I'm going to reduce minus a half by 1 to minus 3 over 2. Then I've got minus a quarter, and I'm multiplying it by minus 3 over 2, and I'm reducing minus 3 over 2 to minus 5 over 2. So all that's left here is just to simplify. Well, I'm going to have a negative 3 over 4, x to the minus 3 over 2. This is going to be a positive, and it's going to be 3 over 8, x to the minus... 5 over 2. I'm just going to rewrite this one on the left because I don't think I've written that one particularly clearly. It should say 3 over 2 minus 3 over 2. And so that's the second derivative. If you wanted to, you could work out the third derivative, you could work out the fourth derivative, you could keep going, but unless you're doing further maths, you will only be doing it to the second derivative. So why don't you have a go at this question, pause the video, and then see if you get the same answer as me, and then you can try exercise 12h. OK, so it says y is equal to 5x cubed. Now, I'm going to split this. So I've got the third, and then I've got the x over x to the half. So let's see if we can simplify that, leaving that 3 in the denominator. That's going to be 5x to the third minus a third. Well, that's a power of 1, and 1 minus a half is just a half. So I can differentiate this with respect to x, and y, when you differentiate it with respect to x, is dy by dx. I'm going to do 5 times the 3, which is 15, and reduce that power by 1. I'm going to do minus a third times a half. Minus a third times a half, it's just going to be minus a sixth. So it's going to be minus a sixth x, reduce that power by 1. A half minus 1 is minus a half. When I differentiate dy by dx with respect to x, I get d2y by dx squared. 15 times 2, that's 30x when I've reduced that power by 1. I've then got for this next bit in my working out, I've got minus a sixth times minus a half. Well, it's definitely going to be a plus, and that's going to be a twelfth x to the minus 3 over 2. So that is our second derivative that we've got there. OK, I hope that you have found um, this bit here about why that notation works interesting. This idea about you're applying this function on either side of the equation is going to be really important in year two. So make sure that you have understood that. OK, have a go at exercise 12H.